Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Pause for Pedagogy, a conversation with Marianne Peabody and Tara Coast on a multiplier effect, group study abroad and expressive arts as leadership pedagogy with the International Leadership Association. ILA and I are thrilled to welcome Tara and Marianne to our latest conversation in the Pause for Pedagogy series. Welcome to you both. Hello. Thank you. So a little bit more about our guest today. Mary Ann Peabody is an assistant professor of social and behavioral sciences for the University of Southern Maine, a nationally recognized play therapist with her doctorate in executive leadership. She has held leadership positions with nonprofits and community engagement offices. Internationally, she has served as past chair of the Association of Play Therapy, current foundation board member, and regional state representative. Mary Ann has presented internationally on topics of experiential learning, pedagogy with object mediated communication, expressive arts in the classroom, and community engagement. She actively supports the South Africa Montague Project through efforts in grant writing and scholarship. Dr. Tara Gray Coast is a leadership and organizational studies professor at the University of Southern Maine. Her work focuses on refining the training processes that enhance creativity in teams and teaching individual techniques to enhance leadership abilities in multicultural, multinational environments. She has shared her work at venues around the world. She is a visiting scholar at Singapore Management University's We Kim We Center for Cultural Diversity and past president of the American Creativity Association. So let's dive right in. My first question is, what key question or questions were you hoping to answer in writing this article? Um, I think I'll sort of say we were absolutely new that um, the pedagogy of study abroad and you know was a high impact practice and both Tara and I are experiential kind of professors in our in our practices and so when you put those two together we really knew we had something there uh, and so what was really critical to answer the question in this particular article was you know, when you combine, when you integrate two already powerful pedagogies, you know, that mix, that multiplier effect. So that's what we were looking for. Wonderful. And I love the title. I love the idea of the multiplier effect and that idea of integration. Certainly something that we don't see a lot of in some of the pedagogy and curriculum that we do, particularly in leadership. We think about leadership as a construct in and of itself, but not how different pieces can integrate for leadership development. So tell me more about the practice or pedagogy you discuss in your article. Uh, where did the idea or need for this work come from? Um, I'm going to take that one. We had uh, an idea around this for quite some time in our program. We were really looking for um, a site that we could do uh, a, a multi-year project with. Um, I was really interested in doing international service learning. Um, so that in and of itself, you have service learning, high impact, study abroad, high impact. Um, and then I was, uh, I added to that the uh, expressive arts. So we have three high impact pedagogies in the same course design. We picked Montague, South Africa in particular because this is a rural community that's um, very underserved. There is a huge amount of at-risk youth um, and not a lot of opportunities for them. So it was a stable location that could really use our help. And um, we partnered with seven area nonprofits who were delighted to send um, young people with leadership potential to us and have now done two successful and are about to launch on a third um, iteration of our programming there. So it's pretty exciting. Very cool. And the idea of longitudinal study, seeing that impact over time, that's what excites me about your article and mm -hmm. this project, mm -hmm. that it's not just what I'm used to in leadership development programming, which is a single workshop or a couple of times students get together for a certificate, but really seeing that growth and development over time and being able, as you, you say, to make an impact that perhaps right. is more longitudinal than just seeing someone once. Yeah, and the students don't, um, it, this isn't a once and done, 
um, experience for them. Mm -hmm. Students who were involved in um, 2010 are still very much involved in the project. So um, there, it's not just the university having continuity with the effort. It's it's the participants themselves over a number of years. Right. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what were your learning outcomes for this practice or perhaps for your pedagogy? And how did you assess whether these outcomes were met? Um, I think there are several learning objectives in the course, um, as, as all courses. But the course meets prior to going to um, South Africa. So there's both an experiential piece in the actual classroom that is very much um, a discussion and dialogue piece. But they're learning about the culture of, of South Africa and some of the social changes and challenges um, that have gone on as well as, you know, really looking at our um, sort of assumptions and our preconceived kind of notions um, in that way. And because, you know, traveling with 20 other people is a leadership experience all in of itself, we, we also, um, you know, I, I think Tara orchestrated really nicely um, in the course sometimes you know, our strengths and our talents and what drives us crazy and those kind of things. Um, because I think while you can talk about group process in a classroom and do lots of simulations, um, absolutely traveling together is, is a group process laboratory. So we learned about South Africa. We learned about, you know, deepening our understanding of, of different leadership principles. Um, that impacts social change. And um, then also, not everyone had traveled. So this really being globally sensitive to the population and the youth and um, you know, kind of having a sense of awareness of perhaps our privileges and um, just being aware of the sensitivity around some of the youth that we were going to be working with. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, I believe, also being open to think, to realizing that sometimes we'll be teachers, they'll be teachers, we'll be students, they'll be students, and the, so the co-learning that um, occurred. So those were some of the objectives that we started out with. It's amazing. I love the idea of a living leadership laboratory. That absolutely yeah. makes sense to me, thinking about traveling with that many students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I think the second part of that question was the assessment factor. Mm -hmm. We do our, um, we do some grant writing around um, service learning and the impact of service learning to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, Marianne and I um, have been working on that for a while now. So we have students do, the university students do um, that assessment that standard assessment for the course because it's a service learning course. But we also um, do uh, assessment of all the participants and their experience. Um, that in and of itself can be quite challenging because we have to translate into multiple languages. The program is run in three different languages. So um, to make sure that we have uh, <clears throat> good understanding and, and good data coming out can, can be interesting. Um, <clears throat> we also have the university students do um, both a ongoing journal um, where they relate not only their experiences, but their experiences in light of this, the full months of scholarly work we do before we go. And then we also have them do um, a reflection paper at the end where they're really supposed to dive deep once they're out of the experience for a while, once they've been back for a while on the impact of, of you know, the book learning and the experience on themselves now and, and into the future. So that's a lovely segue, thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you see future research or perhaps writing headed in this area? What will you be writing or exploring next? Um, we probably could both answer this because I know we have some <laughs> common commonalities, but maybe we have some 
also some other interests um, along the way. Um, I want to, uh, you know, there's there's so much that that happens. I believe with this sort of mixing and integrating the um, expressive arts with with leadership, and then putting the global piece together. So I really want to. Um, dive more into and I've started a little bit about the whole group process piece and the dynamics and how that translates into you know effective um, leadership and the skills that were a part of that um, I'm also curious as as Tara shared you know there were three languages going on so when you use an expressive arts pedagogy that reaches beyond language um, and I think there's something there to tap into. Um, and just, we recently wrote something about the collective impact. What's, a, what's interesting, I think, here and very unique is having so many nonprofits and the university working in partnership right. um, and, and exploring that. We have the data from the assessments um, of students. Um, I'd be curious to do some sort of lifting content analysis of about the emotion and the affective piece because there's some transform transformative learning um, and writing that the students do that I think we could really lift and see the impact. Mm -hmm. And also um, we are increasingly getting into the realm where we need to look at um, the community impact. So now that we have a number of iterations of the programming, what what is the impact on the community in Africa and the communities that the students go back to? So as we get um, a number of years out, how do we look at um, what each participant has done to better their communities? Um, and that Anecdotally, we have some amazing um, uh, examples. I, I would say that there are very few students that have gone through this that have not felt uh, more empowered to make an impact. So I think there's a rich, uh, rich vein that we can mine there as well. Exciting and a lot to do, it sounds like. More trips yes. in your future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that brings me to the end of my question. So thank you both again for joining us today. Uh, as our ILA members know, Pause for Pedagogy is an initiative of the Leadership Education Member Interest Group or the International Leadership Association. All of our articles and videos are available in the member connector and online at www.ila-net.org. You can also follow us on Twitter at the underscore ILA. So Tara and Marianne, thank you both again so much. This is an exciting addition to our series, and I look forward to potentially hearing from you again soon as some of these future research ideas take shape. Thank you so Great. much. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa.